Welcome to this presentation on HF antenna myths, a subject that is both technical and surprisingly rich in folklore. Across forms, books, and conversations, you'll hear many claims presented as universal truths. These often stem from specific experiences that don't always apply broadly. In reality, the effectiveness of any antenna is a product of multiple variables, environment, design, propagation conditions, and frequency. Oversimplified rules tend to break under scrutiny when applied outside their ideal scenarios. Our goal here is to examine some of the most persistent myths and replace them with evidence-based understanding that you can use to make some more informed and successful choices in your amateur radio setup. Myth number one, bigger antennas are always better. The belief that bigger is better dominates much of the HF antenna discourse. This myth persists because larger antennas often have more gain or bandwidth, which leads to an oversimplified equation of size with performance. However, performance is far more nuanced. It depends heavily on where and how the antenna is installed, and what frequencies it's intended to serve. For instance, a large Yagi beam placed too low might suffer from poor takeoff angles while a smaller antenna placed higher or in a better location could really outperform it. In reality, design placement and purpose all contribute to an antenna's effectiveness. Bigger antennas may be better in specific context, but definitely not all. Your ideas deserve precision, speed, and reliability. PCBWay.com delivers all three. With top-tier PCB manufacturing, expert assembly, and fast worldwide shipping, PCBWay helps you turn your concepts into working projects, quickly and affordably. Whether you're prototyping or producing at scale, you'll get the quality and value your product demands. Build smarter with PCBWay.com. Myth number two, low SWR equals high efficiency. Standing wave ratio, or SWR, is often misunderstood in amateur radio. Because it's one of the easiest metrics to measure, it becomes the default gauge for antenna performance. This leads many to believe that low SWR automatically signals a highly efficient antenna system. But SWR only tells us about impedance matching. You could achieve a one-to-one -one match feeding power into a dummy load, which radiates virtually nothing. This is why SWR alone is not a reliable indicator of radiation efficiency. True efficiency depends on various physical and environmental factors. Losses in the feed line, poor grounding, and even poor antenna design can make a low SWR antenna system ineffective in practice. Myth number three, low dipoles can't do DX. One of the most persistent myths in HF antenna theory is that you can't work DX using a low mounted dipole. This stems from the assumption that only antennas with low takeoff angles, typically mounted high, are suitable for long distance communication. While elevation can influence your radiation angle, propagation conditions play a more decisive role. During periods of higher solar activity, or on certain bands like 10 or 15 meters, even antennas with higher takeoff angles can make contacts across the globe. In practice, many hams have logged DX contacts from modest home stations using dipoles strung just a few meters above the ground. Placement matters, but it's not the only factor. Myth number four, verticals are always noisier. Many amateur operators believe that vertical antennas are inherently noisier than their horizontal counterparts. This impression often comes from urban environments where man-made noise is prevalent and vertically polarized signals, including noise, are more commonly picked up. However, noise pickup isn't determined by antenna orientation alone. It's affected by factors like polarization of local noise sources, grounding quality, and nearby structures. In rural or quiet RF environments, verticals can be remarkably effective and sometimes quieter than horizontal antennas. So while the myth has some basis in experience, it's not universally true. Properly installed verticals in the right setting can yield excellent signal-to-noise performance. Myth number five, antenna tuners make antennas resonant. A common misconception among new operators is that an antenna tuner alters the antenna's electrical length or makes it resonant. This confusion arises from the term tuner, which suggests active modification of the antenna itself. In reality, antenna tuners, or impedance matching units, work by making the impedance at the feed point acceptable for the transceiver. This protects the radio and allows it to deliver power efficiently, but it does not improve the actual radiation efficiency or resonance of the antenna. The antenna remains non-resonant if it was so to begin with. For best performance, physical adjustments to the antenna length or geometry are still necessary. Myth number six, wire antennas must be straight. Another popular myth in the ham radio community is that wire antennas must be perfectly straight to function properly. 
This likely stems from textbook illustrations and antenna modeling that often show idealized linear layouts. However, in real-world installations, especially in limited or urban environments, getting a straight run is often impossible. Fortunately, wire antennas are quite forgiving. They can be bent, sloped, or zigzagged to fit around obstacles like trees, buildings, or terrain. While extreme bends can affect radiation pattern and impedance, modest, nonlinear layouts usually result in negligible performance losses. Flexibility in the layout is a powerful advantage of wire antennas. Myth number seven, use exact manufacturer dimensions. Antenna kits often come with precise measurements and detailed instructions. This fosters the belief that those dimensions are universally true and must be followed exactly to achieve proper performance. In reality, antenna behavior is influenced heavily by environmental conditions, including ground conductivity and height above terrain. Minor tweaks to length, the feed point, or orientation are frequently necessary to achieve resonance and efficiency at the desired frequencies. Experienced operators often find that tailored or even homebrew designs when matched to the local environment can outperform off-the-shelf solutions. Use manufacturer dimensions as a guideline, not as gospel. Myth number eight, traps and coils ruin efficiency. Some radio amateurs avoid trapped or loaded antennas due to the belief that traps or coils inherently destroy efficiency. This belief is partly grounded in truth. These components can introduce laws, especially if poorly designed. However, when executed properly, load and coils and traps can deliver excellent results. High quality components with low resistance materials and optimized placements enable multiband performance with only minor efficiency loss. They're especially valuable in restricted environments where full size antennas are impractical. Rather than avoiding them altogether, it's more productive to view traps and coils as strategic tools, a trade off that enables operation under real world limitations. Myth number nine. HF beams always beat wires. HF beam antennas are often portrayed as the pinnacle of amateur radio performance. With their gain, front to back ratio, and directionality, this leads many to assume that they are universally superior to wire antennas. However, real world performance doesn't always align with theory. A beam poorly placed or facing suboptimal directions can underperform. Meanwhile, a wire antenna installed at the right height and angle may provide excellent near vertical incident sky wave NVIS, coverage or general HF performance. The key takeaway is that context matters. There is no one size fits all solution and sometimes simpler wire antennas are not only more practical, they outperform their high tech beam counterparts. Myth number 10, you need a tower for HF. Towers are often equated with serious HF capability, and for good reason. They're effective, they elevate antennas for better takeoff angles, and are prominent features of high-performance stations. But the assumption that the tower is necessary is simply not true. Many hams operate effectively from locations with no permanent towers. Trees, flagpoles, or portable masts are often provide adequate support for wire or vertical antennas. When installed correctly and tuned to the operating environment, these setups can achieve impressive range and efficiency. This myth limits creativity. Embrace the flexibility of HF antennas and you'll find plenty of ways to get on the air, tower or not. As we've seen, many widely shared beliefs about HF antennas do not hold up under scrutiny. From SWR misconceptions to assumptions about antenna size, orientation, or mounting height, these myths can mislead even experienced operators. There is no silver bullet in antenna theory. What works for one operator in one location may fail in another. Factors like propagation, geography, and installation options all influence results, which is why experimentation and adaptation are key. In closing, don't take every rule at face value. Be skeptical, stay curious, and most importantly, test everything. Your shack is your lab. That's the spirit of amateur radio. And with that, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.